As explained in my previous controller curves videos, curves and saturation changes how your controller inputs are seen by the game. Adjusting them to suit your style may help with your accuracy and how the ship feels to you. I recommend before watching this video watching the controller curves video linked here. It will help you understand the concepts that I'm going to cover. I'll go over a couple of different curves and briefly touch on the saturation levels and explain their pros and cons in my opinion. For ease of visualizing the effect of each curve, I'm going to demonstrate the controller inputs versus output using joystick curves. All these settings are totally subjective and will feel different to each player. There is no god mode curve that suits everyone, so try out different curves until you find something that you like. First up is the most obvious, the default curve. The default curve is a linear curve that provides no output modification at all. This will look like a straight line diagonally from corner to corner of the curve box. A non-modified curve will mean that your controller's movements are seen by the game one to one without any amplification or dampening. This feels very natural to most players and is easy to get used to. The downfall of this curve is that if you want to make rapid turns, you'll need to move your controller center to full deflection to achieve the maximum turn rate. Or worse, if you need to reverse your turn, you will have to move the stick from full left to full right to achieve the max turn rate. This will make your reaction time longer due to having to move the stick further. So how can we make our response time quicker? By amplifying the output of our axes like this. This type of curve will amplify the ship's rotation inputs evenly. Setting the curve number to less than 1 will set how much of the stick's movements are amplified. Another option that will affect amplification of your stick output is the saturation setting. Saturation will set how much throw is actually seen in the game. Saturation can only be used to amplify your movements and cannot be set as a negative number to dampen them. Setting your saturation to 50, for example, will mean that the game will only use the first 50% of the axis of movement away from center. You can achieve the same thing using a linear curve. A curve that achieves a saturation of 50% with no other modification would look like this. This curve will make the game see your stick at full deflection when it's physically at 50% of maximum throw. Using either saturation or a linear curve to amplify the stick axes will mean that fine movements around the center will be more twitchy, making things like aiming more difficult. So how can we make fine adjustments easier? We can set our curve to dampen our inputs. A dampened curve would look like this. This will do the opposite of what we had achieved with the previous example. This would mean that relatively large movements of the stick would be seen as lesser movements by the game. The negative of this kind of curve is that our reaction time would again be a lot longer, making rapid changes in direction difficult. Okay, then what if we want the best of both worlds? I want to be able to turn quickly and have the ability to make fine adjustments around the center. The answer is the S-curve. S-curves give dampening around the center of the stick's throw, allowing for fine adjustment but with amplification at the extremities to allow for rapid maximum turn rates. Where the transition between dampening or amplifying occurs is a personal preference. A negative of S-curves is that they can make the stick feel different at every position along the entire throw of the axis. This can feel unnatural to some players. As I said at the start of the video, controller curves are a very personal thing and you'll have to test and adjust your settings until you find what suits you. If you would like further information on setting up controllers, Legacy Instructional Series has an excellent guide on the subject. The link for that is in the description. Personally, I use a linear curve for rapid movements and adjust the feel through saturation until I was totally happy with it. Once you find your preferred curve, you won't look back. Good hunting, pilots. For more information on how spacecraft systems work in Star Citizen, please refer to the spacecraft flight manuals found on the RSI website. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.